Good morning. I hope you're all well. So, this is the next video that I'm uploading today. So, it's called Exam Tips on How to Write Good Essays, UK Standard. So, obviously, I'm based in the UK, right, as you guys are probably well know. And uh, this is quite generic, actually. It's not just specific to the UK, but it's something that international students struggle quite a lot when they go to countries such as the UK or other Western nations. And I've just made this video to explain to everyone how to improve your marks and what sort of things that the examiners are looking for, you know, and how to write good essays to a high scientific standard. Because the reason is, the reason being is that in Asia, we have a different way. Asia and other parts of the world, we have a different way, perhaps, of like grading stuff and what sort of stuff, uh, the sort of stuff that they're looking for. But in this video, I'm going to go through about exactly how it works in the UK education system. And the sort of stuff that they were looking for that would help improve your mark and give you good quality answers. So, writing good essays. This is the first thing we're going to talk about, right? I cannot stress how important it is that you do not copy and paste, right? Because copy and paste, what happens is, is f what I've heard is a lot of something that a lot of international students struggle with, right? And it's something that is frowned upon a lot here within the UK is this copy and paste system. You cannot just lift from the internet someone else's work, even parts of it or even sentences and just say, this is mine and do it. That's not how it works here. You know, um, it is something that in my encounter with international students, I'm seeing quite a lot, you know, so it's uh, not good in that sense. And this is a, this has to be noted that there's a no plagiarism policy. So plagiarism, I'll go over in the next slide, what that is, etc. But basically, plagiarism can be counted as something like cheating, right? So taking it, taking over someone else's work, copying it, or like claiming it as your own, right? You're not done your own investigation, etc. You basically just reclaim someone else's ideas. So to clarify how important this is, these days it's quite common that people are using stuff like stuff such as ChatGB, ChatGBT, Quillbot, and other rephrasing tools. But you have to think about this: is it worth it? Because UK universities have got policies in place to, to discipline this sort of stuff, you know. You can end up getting zero on your mark, you can end up failing, you can, and the worst case scenario is, and you would get an expulsion, you know, and be banned potentially from other universities. So, very importantly, right, you don't want to get involved and get to use this stuff like chat, GBT, Quillbot, etc. Because if you get caught, first of all, it's, it's academic integrity. We want to make people be able to be good writers, people that are be able to think originally about their work and not just copy and paste other people, yeah. So, right, another tip for writing good essays is to do extra reading, such as journals, websites, you know. So with regards to journals, there's journals such as Nature, there's other stuff such as, uh, there's other journals such as Cell, and there's something called an impact factor, right? So see if a journal has a high impact factor. That means it's got more quality, better research, you know, so that's something you want to look at look at when you're doing these your research and stuff like that and checking it to see the information. If it's published in a high nature journal, like high journals such as Nature, with a high impact factor of five, and I think you go above, I think, then that means that it's really good, you know, it's high quality research, well respected. You know, the lower the impact factor, the less it's been used, etc. You know, and you also want to see how much something has been cited to see that it is reliable, etc. Other stuff you can do is use websites. Now, the thing is, is websites are okay for your background information, but you really want to be using journals, you know, and you want, and for journals, you want to be able to use stuff such as like Google Scholar, NCBI, uh, Science Direct. You know, so regarding NCBI, if anyone wants to know how this works, NCBI, PubMed, etc., leave it in the comment section. I'll be happy to explain that, you know, in one of my next videos about how to do that, how to reference, you know, if anyone wants to know how to do that. That's why you, you would be able to write good essays, making sure that you use stuff such as Google Scholar, NCBI, Science Direct, etc. And for every other faculty, they've also got other different similar systems, you know. Uh, very important once again to note that the UK standard is different compared to Asian countries, you know, and other countries around the world. And you also want to watch your word count because see if it says 2,000 words, including references, 10% is accepted for most universities, I think, you know, but the po point of the matter is, is they want to see how well you write within a given, within a given word frame, not the quantity, so you can end up going way over the word mark, 
and you would lose like 10%, 15%. So it's a skill you need to learn how to write good and within the limit. And moreover, you also need to learn how to write scientifically and more advanced English, you know, because the better you write it, and it looks better and it sounds better, you know, and it's more likely to improve your mark as well. But it's not enough to sit, stick with simple basic English, you know. For those that of you that are doing pre-sessional courses, etc., something that you guys would want to learn. So that is plagiarism and the structure of your essays, right? So, first of all, as I said before, plagiarism is unacceptable, right? The definition of plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own, right? In the previous slides, I also mentioned ChatGBT and all these other stuff like this Crowbot and other rephrasing tools. And I'll ask you again, is it worth it? If you get caught, it's an expulsion offence, right? And there are different types of plagiarism to be aware, aware of. As you can see at the wee diagram on the side here, there's complete plagiarism, which is basically just lifting it and taking the full essay or like somebody else's work and submitting it as your own. There's direct plagiarism, which is where basically you're... Taking it, you're copying someone else's work, right? But it's like they're telling you to do it, right? Verbally, etc. And then you get caught for similar similarities. There's source space where you take it off a website or a journal without changing the words. Or then there's paraphrasing, where you change a few words, but you show you don't understand the meaning, right? So you can take it off a <coughs> off a journal and then like change one or two words, but that's still plagiarism. Then there's like patching up images, you know, changing images. So say for instance, if you have an image showing something and you add something in it, this shows a different result. That's problematic. There's ghost writing, getting other people to do your essays for you. And then there's self and accidental plagiarism as well. And make no mistake, accidentally plagiarizing will get you into trouble, right? Because when you when you sign up to these universities, there's a code of conduct policies that you need to sign in order to plagiarism. Right? So Moving on, some examples of like structure of good essays and how to change it. So you don't want to be writing basic like I used the pipette or I did this. So, <coughs> so you see here an example. You changing that sentence to using a pipette, ten milliliter of sodium hydroxide was transferred. Subsequently, ten microliters was then added. You know you don't want to do stuff like I I I then I added. You, this is this is not good enough, especially for like uh, honours and honours final year master students, especially PhDs. Yeah, this is sort of stuff that you could get away with in first year university, but by the time you're second year, this will be very frowned upon, you know. Then there's figure legends. So if you have a figure, you don't want to just shove in an image of a result and be like, yeah, that's it. You need to explain it underneath. Give a title, explain what it says, you know. So in my next video, I can, I can show you an example of like what would be good figure legends. And then very importantly, reference styles. So with regards to reference style, right, so every university has its own reference system, you know. The universities I went to, they use Harvard, but whatever your reference style is, you have to stick to that, otherwise you will lose marks, right? And depending on your reference system, like Harvard is like, you would have to list it alphabetically, like you would do it, all the reference in the bottom, A, B, C, D, E, right? Not like the A, then the V, then the C, this is completely wrong. And then a numbering system. If you're using a numbering system, then for that, all the references need to be numbered in order. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. And guys, I'm going to see this once again. See, referencing, it is very easy to lose marks if it's not done correctly, you know. Like, this can make a difference between a high mark and a low mark. So, say for instance, referencing is very easy marks to get if you do it properly. Now, moving on to write, writing scientifically, right. So, as I said before, it is expected at master's level, especially and, and PhD, to write to a high standard and for undergraduate students to write the skill. Simple basic writing is not is not enough. So as I said in the previous slides, you cannot write stuff like I did this and I did that and we did this and I then did this. You have to be so you have to use you have to use higher language. You know, so if you look at the third point here, examples, right? So shown below. Right, so this is examples of how you would write scientifically. Right, so some people might write, I have read a study and it showed this. No, that's not good enough, right? You could write, various studies have displayed that the use of these inhibitors has increased the effect, right? Or you could write, interestingly, further studies have demonstrated, right? What you don't want to be writing is, is 
I did some research and there's research that shows, right, too simple. You want to make it sound more advanced, yeah, like you've done it, you've written it, right? So instead of using the word next, some people would, would do this. I did next looked, or I did this next, you would just say subsequently. So subsequently this is shown, or subsequently this is displayed, or subsequently this is demonstrated, yeah? And rather than sit there and say, looking at both these bins, or I can compare them both, you would say contrastingly, or in contrast, right? Or comparatively. These sort of words can make it sound more advanced, you know? And something else I've noticed as well in my, in my time with international students, a lot of them, is there's a lot of emotive language, right? Like, you don't want to be writing stuff like, I feel, or astonishingly, you don't want to be using emotive words like, intriguingly, you know, or stuff that shows how you feel, do you know what I mean? Avoid that sort of language, you know, stick to writing scientifically. And a final point I want to make is, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this, is to be professional in your writing. Avoid controversial phrases or swearing, like, do not be writing F words and like, or, Say, for instance, I had one student that I remember back in the day when I was um, guiding him on how to write. He wrote, uh, I read from this idiot in a newspaper, and uh, uh, I read from this idiot in the journal, and I was just like, like, don't write stuff like that. Don't call him an idiot, you know? Like, he might sound like an idiot, but he's not an idiot, you know? So avoid stuff like that, and like, avoid like controversial phrases as well, and swearing. First of all, I would recommend when it comes to preparing for exams is to stay positive, you know? It is stuff that you know, it is stuff that you've learned, right? If you have studied hard, worked hard, etc., done your stuff, yeah, then you'll be totally fine. You know, nothing to worry about. Everything they ask you in exams it is always stuff that you have studied for. They will never ask you some stuff outside the syllabus. You know, that's not how this works, you know. I know in some countries, they make you learn everything, yeah. It's not a matter of learning everything. Everything that is covered in lectures is examinable, yeah. Everything covered in essays is examinable. I would also advise that people do not panic, right? It is natural to stress and worry, but as I said before, make sure that you have done your study and you've you have done your stuff right. And this brings me to my next point about plan well in advance, right? So, a big mistake people do is, is they leave their deadlines all last minute and then they realise exam time is around the corner. So when I was doing my masters and my PhD and my undergrad, right, so I did something very smart. Whenever I got an assignment, I would start it as soon as possible, do half of it and do like a bit at a time. You know, and by the time it came to exams, all I had was time to study for exams, you know. With some of my friends, who I hope are watching these videos, will, will probably be laughing at this point. I would always advise them, guys, try and do your assignments on time. But they would leave it all to like a week before a deadline. And then suddenly they've got six assignments and they've got exams coming up and they're panicking. That's why we been planning well in advance. If you have time to start something and plan it out and even do a bit a day. So... In my masters, I had an assignment that I literally did one paragraph every day. And within three weeks, it was done, you know. And by the time it came to my exams, I had lots of time to study, you know. And like I said, cramming isn't always best. Some people are crammers, and that's how they learn, so they like to just do everything last minute. But it isn't always best. Maybe it's best to like give yourself breathing space and be like, okay, I have a spare hour today, I have a spare two hours, I'll do this assignment, I'll start it off. It's like going to the gym. 15 minutes is better than nothing, you know? That's what they say. And once again, I'll say this. Once again, I'll say this. What smart, not uh, not hard, you know? Like, smart working is better. It's good to work very hard, but you don't need to know everything. What you need to know is what you need for your degree and what you need this, you know, to see when you went to jobs, etc. Or you don't want to do further research, you'll get tainted anyway, you know. So make sure you know what it is you're learning, right? Don't just go completely throw off into a new topic, right? And also, when, it's, when it says to listen to what the lecturer says, this is very important. In my experience, right, everything that comes out of the lecturer's mouth is very valuable. So always note that down, you know. Listen to what they say, because more than likely they're saying everything that's on the lecture slides, you know. Try and compliment where it's done reading, you know, such reading journals, etc. You know, reading journals do a bit more further reading. And another thing I'll say is, is that this is a very important point, right? Compliment your lecturers once again, sorry, when it comes to your uh, lecture notes. Listen to what the lecturer says. Have a look at it. Go home. Refresh you the same night, you know, week by week, you know. And then finally, a very important point is this is something that people are not aware of, right? When you are sitting in an exam in the UK, 
when that invigilator, the examiner says, put your pen down, see if you keep writing after they say put your pen down, they have the right to rip that up and put that in the bin and there is nothing you can do about it, you know? So bear that in mind please when you're doing exams, right? I've heard this from many stories, I've seen this from my own classmates, people think they'll be smart and keep writing it while when, when it said pens down, pens down means pens down. If you get caught even writing a second after, two seconds after, literally they have the right to rip your paper up where you'll get zero and no amount of appealing will do it, yeah? But nothing will be able to sort that, you know? So, best of luck everyone and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to comment, like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll be releasing the next video soon hopefully. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye.